Hi everyone, Joe for Jaspi's CaseBreaks.com. We did it. We knocked out 2022 Bowman Baseball 8-Box Jumbo Pick Your Team 6. No vet paper ships, no rookie paper ships, no prospect paper ships, but Bowman first paper do ship. Previous years we hadn't shipped them, and we made that clear in the description, but this year we are shipping Bowman first paper. So that's good enough, of course, obviously all the hits and numbered cards and numbered paper and autographs, blah, 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 all those shit. You know the drill by now. Big thanks to... There's the case right there. Big thanks to this group for getting in on the action. Now, if you have a little rooftop next to your name, that means you won that spot in the filler, the team random that we did. Some of you won spots in a filler pack and then won a team. So a good little parlay there. Thanks, everybody, for getting in. Appreciate it. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, I don't think Jose Fernandez does count. Yeah, gone too soon, of course, but he definitely made it to the pros and was highly touted and, and was doing incredibly well. I think Rex was talking more like, who, who are some of these players that are maybe like high school stars or maybe even college stars who just for one reason or another didn't quite, could have been great but didn't quite make it. First jumbo box. Now jumbo, I know we did a couple hobby cases this past handful of days. The hobby cases only have one autograph per box. These jumbos have more cards and three autos per box. You know, Marshawn Lynch would talk about how when he was going to school in Oakland in high school, he was saying, he, he, he said, maybe junior high, early high school, he said, I don't think I was the best athlete, you know, the best athlete on the streets. They were at my school, you know, like, but he said that a lot of his, you know, he lost a lot of friends to, to gangs. And so some of those athletes, you know, never make it. You know, yeah. How do you say is this per player's first name? Sasha Cotton was the best basketball player that Oliver's ever seen in person, but never made it to the league. What happened? Sometimes it's injury. Sometimes it's an untimely death, medical condition, you know, substance abuse, men you know, mental health issues. Like, there's so many reasons why, like, that's why, you know, it's like... You know, that's why it's sort of, uh, it's really hard. <laughs> I know it's, it's sort of the understatement, but it's, it's really hard to be a professional athlete. Shay, okay. Shay Cotton. Yeah, inner city kids that never got a chance. No one sees them because no one's ever looking at them. Well, people are looking, recruiting inner cities all the time. But maybe an inner city where, where a school can't afford a basketball team or a football team. Yeah, maybe in that case, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a missed opportunity right there. Here's Anthony Rodriguez, Bowman first autograph for the Giants. We'll do autograph recap at the end too. Ariano with that one. So he could dunk outside... The key at 11. Wow. Went to Alabama but didn't do anything. Back injuries and grades and never got a chance. Ended up at Long Beach State. Um, 
Yeah, I think uh, I think Oliver may may know more about this than I I do, but I think there's often in LA anyway, and I'm sure any other bigger city where where uh, high schools can be accused of recruiting in inner cities, and then you know then creating like fake addresses or whatever so they could play at uh, maybe a more prestigious high school or something like that. That that happens quite frequently around here. And, there's a very nebulous sort of legality or morality or whatever to it that it's not very regulated, you know. I think you can get in trouble. I'm assuming you can get in trouble for that, but I don't know how much trouble you can get. It's not like it's not like there's an NCAA. I guess there is a governing body, a sports body, but I don't know how big the, the punishments are. Right, happens all the time, yeah. Some kid in the you know in the inner city of Los Angeles gets plucked up, get a scholarship, go to private school, win, <laughs> yeah. There's Felix Valiero, one six three at three ninety nine. Lime green paper for the Brew Crew. That'll be for Jeff. Oh, did Redondo get got in trouble for moving kids into the area? There's Creed Williams. Yeah, if you thought like, if you thought the uh, the paying of college students were bad in in college, man, there's nothing more crazy, I think. And that's that. There's there's a documentary there, you know, just like the, the insanity of like high school sports and the the recruiting that happens and all the crazy parents involved and all that sort of stuff. It's wild. But yeah, Rodano got in trouble for moving kids to the air for basketball. We were awesome, Oliver saying, but the parents of the kids that really lived here got pissed, got the coach fired. They won the D2 state championship like eight or nine years ago, yeah. It's crazy. There's Nick Gonzalez to 125. And like, it's, it gets, it's earlier and earlier too. You know, like I feel like kids are playing travel ball at, at a much earlier age. This is for the Pirates. This will be for Dusty. He did not return for the third period. After you know, Mike Sullivan the shadiness of the AAU circuit for basketball has been has been well documented. Right, yeah. Tim saying Chicago had a young legend that was shot a year ago. And he was going to be good. Yeah, most of the stories about the greatest players to never make it, you know, are usually <laughs> kind of sad stories, eventually. And there's Larry Ernesto, 48 out of 250, purple chrome autograph for Jeff Lydell, or Lydell and the Brewers. There you go, Jeff, on the board. There's a refractor, Estev Machado to 4.99. It's for the Blue Jays. That'll be for Jason. And all those uh, those cards will uh, sleeve into our shipping team will sleeve and tot load them before they're before they're sorted and shipped. Of course, we'll do an autograph recap at the end. Box one in the books. Box two. Here we go.
Box two, another three autographs to go. To take a look at what happened in the world of baseball. A Dan Vogelbach home run leads the Pirates past my Dodgers, 5-3. Christian Yelich has a record-tying third cycle. He hit for the cycle today, but in a losing effort. It's never fun. I think all three of Christian Yelich's uh, cycles, when he had when he hit for the cycle, have been against the Reds, is what I saw. The other person with three cycles, uh, I believe, is Trey Turner. No one has four cycles? Glaber Torres had five RBIs in the 5-3 in the win over the Blue Jays. Marlins use an eight-run ninth. Wow. An eight-run ninth to blow past the Diamondbacks, 11-3. I think that might be a record. No, maybe not. Oh, there's five people with three cycles? Who are the other? Who are the others? No one has four, though, right? Oh, I think Trey Turner is the only active player that has that currently has it. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. Adrian Beltre, Babe Herman, Bob Musil, John Riley are the ones with uh, the other players with three cycles. So no one has four. I guess it's I guess it's tough. <laughs> I suppose this is a, there's Brandon Marsh. He's been playing well. Paper to four ninety nine. That'll be for Tim Burke. I think someone correct me if I'm wrong. Is the cycle more rare than the no hitter? I think it is. Especially in recent years, I think we've seen a lot an uptick in no hitters. But cycle doesn't happen all the time. So all these Bowman first papers will ship. That won't ship. That will ship. That's Reginald Preciado. Purple paper to 250. Mark Bissett. Of course, these won't ship. But the Bowman firsts will ship. That obviously ships. This will ship. Colson Montgomery. 28 out of 499. Refractor autograph for Andrew and the White Sox. Yeah, their late first round pick right here. Nice. Yeah, the Reed Detmers no hitter was pretty amazing. It was really efficient too, from what I from what I remember from last night. Um, I think he did it in not too many pitches, maybe under 110 pitches. Which I think that's that's the way. I mean, with I don't know, not a lot of managers, especially with a rookie, not a lot of managers are gonna. Modern managers these days are going to let pitchers go, uh, you know, grind out that 150 pitch no hitter or something like that. You know, guys will get pulled like in the sixth or seventh inning, even with a no hitter. We've seen it happen a lot. But, but yeah, I mean, if you want to do it, you got to be efficient. 108 pitches, right? And he had an easy eighth, Oliver saying, yeah, you got to, that's what you got to do. That's how you have to do the no hitters nowadays. There's Pablo Aliendo, gold shimmer, 22 out of 50 for Mark and the Cubbies. 
The youngest pitcher to ever win a Cy Young. Doc Gooden, maybe? Wasn't Fernando pretty pretty young? Who's the youngest pitcher ever to win back-to-back -back Cy Young Awards? Oh, well, since this is Tim, and he's a Giants fan, it's Tim Lincecum, right? That's easy. <laughs> yeah, it is Tim Lincecum. That's like Rex asking a trivia question, and, and we know it's going to be a cup. <laughs> There's Edgar Cuero, Lava, parallel to 399. That's also for the Halos. That's going to be for Tim Burke. There's Errol Vera, blue paper to 125. Another angel uh, parallel going to uh, going to Tim Burke. <laughs> or by Nolan Ryan Rex, right, right. That 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 would be on brand as well. And we got Dory Lorenzo, ninety-seven out of one ninety-nine. Fuchsia parallel for the Strohs. That's going to be for David Cope. And there's Colson Montgomery, another Colson Montgomery for Andrew Song and the White Sox. Won that spot. I think he's got a lot of symbols next to his name, Andrew. I think you won that spot. You won an extra spot to win a spot and then got randomized the White Sox. That's what I'm seeing. All right, next box. Right, so Doc Gooden is the youngest to win a Cy Young Award. And Tim Lincecum, the youngest to win back-to-back -back Cy Young Awards. Which I don't think has happened since Tim Lincecum, right? Was he also the last player to win back-to-back -back Cy Young Awards? Did Kershaw? A Kershaw one back to back. And Scherzer? Maybe Verlander? DeGrom. I was going to say DeGrom. DeGrom, I remember. I thought there was a year in between Kershaw's. Rex is saying, speaking of which, with all his records, Nolan Ryan never got a Cy Young. Well, Rex, you have to accept the fact Nolan Ryan was not very good. That's why he didn't win any Cy Youngs. He was just around the league for a long time. Just racked up counting stats. Phillies beat the Mariners 4-2. Brandon Crawford homered. Leading Alex Cobb and the Giants past Colorado 7-1. And the Giants beat the Rockies for the 10th straight time. Rocks will get one someday. Rex's Cubs beat the Padres. Rivas is key hit versus hometown Padres. Lifts Cubs to a 7-5 win. A, home, a homecoming of sorts for Al Alfonso Rivas. Um, Soto, Cruz, Pound, Metz's, Taylor McGill, early Nationals win 8-3. Rays snap a three-game losing streak and beat, the, I should have bet the Rays. Teams that usually get no hit oftentimes bounce back the next game. But it took them 10 innings. Rays beat the Angels 4-2. 
A shout out to Tigers 9, nothing, and I've got a handful of more games in the next box. Wait, Tim's got some trivia for us. Only two pitchers in Major League Baseball to win multiple Cy Youngs, to win multiple World Series, to be elected to multiple All-Star Games, to pitch multiple no-hitters? And there's only two. That's a good trivia question. Do we have to fact check Tim, or can we trust him? I, he's been trimming trees all night, so I don't know. I don't know if we. I don't know if we could trust this info. I mean, there's only so many pitchers that have won. That have won. Uh, Multiple Cy Young Awards, so that's got to cut down the list a little bit, and then find those who have no hitters. It's got to be Tin Lincecum, right? That's got to be on the list. Sandy Koufax, maybe? Multiple no hitters? There's Taj Bradley. Oliver's got it? Nice. Well, yeah, one of the answers is definitely Tin Linscombe. And Sandy Koufax is the other. Perfect answer, says Tim. Nice. Good job, Oliver. Hmm. I don't think Maddox ever had a no-hitter, right? Maddox had that uncanny ability to ability though. I think he's had a number of complete games. Here's Adrian Sugestri, Sugestri, Sugesti, two forty out of two ninety nine for the Giants. A number of sub one hundred pitch complete games. Maddox is pretty efficient. There's Roberto Campos, four fourteen out of four ninety nine. That will be for Evan and the Tigers. There's Maddox memes with him uh, showing a house with the corners painted. I get it. He paints those corners. Mike Tower, you're absolutely right. I don't think we're going to see another 300 game winner. Orioles, that's going to be for Anthony Loop. Picked up that team straight up. Creed Williams Refractor Autograph. Nice. Does Verlander get 300 wins? He's at 230 right now. I'm looking at the list right now. He leads all active players with wins with 230. That, that's tough, right? Another... Yeah, I looked it up too, Mike. I got, you, you piqued my curiosity. That's a lot of wins. That's another 70 wins. He's 39 years old. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, you think Kate Upton's holding him back? I think he's doing just fine. No, I don't think I don't think seven wins, seventy wins is gonna happen. The next closest Zach Granke with two hundred and nineteen. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Max Scherzer at one ninety four. There's Dustin Harris to 399. I think that's a tough ask for Scherzer, too. I'm trying to look, um, the baseball reference has the list. I'm trying to look at it while I'm doing this. Um, I'm trying to look at like who's the youngest pitcher. Who's the youngest pitcher with the most wins, I guess, is kind of what I'm looking at. I guess compared to like Verlander, Clayton Kershaw is only 34. Wainwright's 40. So Kershaw, what, five years younger than Justin Verlander, has 189 wins. If he could pitch to Verlander's age, I don't know. That's, he's not going to make it, right? Divided by five. Kershaw would have to win 22 games a season for the next five years. That's going to be tough. Although he's 4-0 this season. Yeah, I think I think three thousand hits will still be will still be a possibility. Let's see, active hits, active players hit list. Pujols is oh Pujols already in Cabrera I already have three thousand. Cano I don't think is going to get three thousand. Yadi won't get to three thousand. Otto's having a bit of a rough year this year. I don't think he'll hit 3,000. I think Elvis Andrews is at 1,800 hits. I don't know where he's at. Where, where is Elvis Andrews? Oh, is, is he on? He's with the A's. I don't know. Elvis Andrews really have to turn back the clock, I think. Yeah, it's going to be years before we we see anybody get close, right? And it's hard to calculate. Like, Jose Altuve is at almost 1,800 hits. Do, do we project that out to 3,000? Maybe. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of hits to go. Freddie Freeman's at 1737. He's 32 years old. 13th season in the league. Yeah, it might be years. Because then we're going to have to start looking at players that have played like less than, you know, less than 10 years in their career just to see if they can even do it. Like, let's look at players who have like 1,500 hits, right? But closer to 10 years in their career, you know, you're asking Ian Desmond, Gene Segura, who are in their 11th years of their career to match, to play another 10 years and, and not drop in production. 
Yeah, that's that's tough. Three thousand hits is not easy, but I think that's going to be. I could see three thousand hits happening again more frequently than say three hundred wins for a pitcher, for a starting pitcher. Seventy-seven out of two ninety-nine. Daryl Hernandez. Ironically, Mike Tower, with the way you know baseball pitching staffs are constructed these days, uh, this one goes to Anthony Liu. Would it be crazy to think that a middle reliever would just rack up those wins? Pitchers getting pulled, starters getting pulled from games earlier, more middle relievers gobbling up some innings. If the game's tied, they end up with the win on their record. A reliever whose whose careers could last a little bit longer than a starting pitcher. <laughs> Can you imagine? A, a middle reliever is going to win 20 games someday. <laughs> Would there be anywhere to see the next big records that may be broken? I actually don't know. But someone's got to have that database somewhere. Or like someone will research it and then put it in a blog post or an article or something like that. There's Creed Williams, another Oriole. 34 out of 75, Anthony Liu. There you go, Anthony. Racking up the O's. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I agree, Rex. I don't think Ripken's consecutive game streak is going to be broken anytime soon. Right, Tim even thinks that he, he he's going to see the 52-game hitting streak get broken, that record being broken before Ripken's record. Absolutely. There's Randy Vasquez, Yankees. Mark with the Yankees. I was just going to say, who's the current active games played leader? And Rebel says Whit Merrifield only needs to play until he's 46 to match uh, Ripken's record. There you go. Go Whit. Yeah, Wayne Gretzky holds a lot of hockey records, so. Although some people think that guy, someone like someone like Connor McDavid could could possibly chase that. Yeah, no, I don't think Elvis Andrews is going to get three thousand. He might be lagging behind a little bit. Click the live button, Tim. There you go. There's Anthony. Congrats. Thanks for getting that team straight up. You're being rewarded. 74 at 99. Green Speckle. Wilman Diaz. That is for the Dodgers. That'll be for Evan. We've got some paper right here. 433 out of 499. Alexander Vargas for the Yankees. Mark B. Speaking of McDavid, which current great athletes may never win their sports championship? Well, baseball is notoriously hard. There are a lot of great players on a lot of teams that aren't going to get close. Mike Trout. Yeah. I mean, although Angels are looking good this season. Might be one of the, one of the best seasons in a long time for the Angels. It's a great start for them. Next box. We are halfway through the break. We've got about another 30, 35 minutes to go. 
Yeah, this break clocks in at about an hour, give or take a few minutes or so. I'm sure football's tough too, right? F football's got to be one of the one of the hard. I mean, I guess all all the sports are hard to win a championship. I mean, you can think about basically think about uh, every every team that Tom Brady beat. You know, sometimes you just run into like a buzzsaw of greatness. How many great, you know? How many great uh, basketball players in the 90s were just blocked, you know, by, you know, the I guess in the 80s, you're blocked by the Lakers and Celtics. In the 90s, you're blocked by, for the most, most of the decade, by Michael Jordan. You know, guys like Stockton and Malone are guys that, two players that just ran into that Bulls buzzsaw. And never knocked out a, uh, a championship. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one, right? Barry Sanders, probably a big name. One of the greats that never won it. There's Jeremy Vargas, Aqua Shimmer to 125 for Jeff and the Brew Crew. And I guess more recently, like Megatron, Calvin Johnson. And then we got a speckle autograph, Luke Waddell, 139 to 299. That's for Atlanta, Jimmy Connell with the Bravos. And we've got Justice is served. Justice Thompson for the Reds. Mark B with the red legs. We're on Cincinnati. We're on Cincinnati. Blue paper to 150, Lenyon Sosa. We got Pablo Aliendo for the Cubbies, Mark Bassett and the Cubs. Mike was asking, which player was your favorite when you were young slash growing up? Hmm, that's a good question. 
I don't know if I had a single favorite player growing up. There's Francisco Alvarez, 75. 36 out of 75. Yellow chrome for Michael P. and the Mets. I always liked the Dodgers growing up, but... I never really had like, oh, there's that one guy's poster that I had on my wall or something like that. I love the Dodgers, though. For Tim, it was Will Clark, Will the Thrill. Yeah, my, my, my cousins are uh, grew up in Northern California. They're big uh, Giants fans. And one of my cousins, Dan, Dan was a lefty, is a lefty. And so in his baseball playing days, yeah, he kind of kind of mimicked that, that sort of Will Clark sort of batting stance. Throat's drying out a little bit. Will Clark hit a home run in his first pro at bat. Can you name the pitcher he hit it off of? He's a Hall of Famer. Tim Lincecum. That's a question from Tim. The answer is always Tim Lincecum. Whatever happened to that one prospect with the last name Justice? I believe he was a Yankee around the same time as Judge. You remember because of Judge and Justice? I don't remember a ball player with the last name Justice that's a prospect recently. I remember David Justice of the Braves back in, back in the day. When did Brooks Robinson become one of Boss Man's favorite players? I think in the 60s. During the heyday of Brooks Robinson. Human vacuum cleaner, I think they used to call them. Did they decide the best placement for the sports sticker? Where, where did you hear about that, Mike? Were we talking about that earlier? No, the, it was just that Nick Jaspi just got overruled from the get-go. I think everyone voted above the TVs. Nick wanted it below the TVs because he thinks of the TV where there's always the sports stickers always on the bottom ticking, right, where my finger is. Oh, they call Jason over to look at it during a break. That's funny. Yeah, uh, that was that was a, a hot debate today. Apparently, a hot topic of conversation. There's Adley Rushman to two fifty. Purple Lava 
Purple Chrome Lava for Anthony and the Orioles. Did they put a poll on IG? Nice. Yeah, it's it's like literally a, a long black bar, like like a like a stock ticker, or like a sports book ticker that you'd see at a, at, a, at a sports book. There's Luke Waddell, two fifty, purple chrome for for Jimmy and the Braves. And then I think they ended up looking at pictures of sports books, and apparently they're all over the place. Some are some have them above the TV, some have them below the TVs. A lot of you know some have them both. Part of the cutting process at the factory, sometimes you get a little extra trim. Uh, you can't believe Nick just didn't say, this is my business, we'll do what I say. It was Nick's dad spearheading the, uh, spearheading that, so. I think Pops still has some, still has some pull around the shot, Rex. The boss man. We got Malcolm Nunez. 162 out of 199, purple paper for the Cardinals. That's for Andrew. And there's Oswaldo Cabrera. That'll be for the Yankees, Mark B with the Bronx Bombers. Just wait until they get a, yeah, wait till we get a Jumbotron. Or we were thinking about like, at one point we thought about, and then we just didn't have the real estate for it, but uh, like a, maybe a three-level bleacher that people can sit on. But then we needed the real estate. Another Yankee, Randy Vasquez. 65 out of 499 refractor autograph for Mark and the Yankees. Two for two. Yeah, dad's always well. Parents just don't understand, Rex. Parents just don't understand. No, I, I actually, uh, I actually uh, voted top two, <laughs> above the TVs, because I hadn't heard about the debate until I came into the shop. And then Nick was like, you don't know what my opinion is. You can just can answer this unbiased. And I answer top, above the TVs. Nick was disappointed. The boss man was very happy. Uh, I think, do they sell stadium size style stadium? We, we do have two seats from Dodger Stadium that are in here. So sometimes I, I sit in those when I take five. We got Luis Gill, Fuchsia Paper to 299 for Mark. And we got Felix Valerio, 390 to 499. That is for Jeff and the Brew Crew. Won that spot, got randomized. The Brewers got a couple autos. I don't think they they set up the the ticker yet, but once it's set up, we'll definitely we'll definitely snap a picture of it and show everybody.
Rex finds old seats fascinating. Yeah, if you have that in your house or a shop, imagine who's who sat in those seats. Yeah, I don't know. Who could have sat in those seats? All right, a president, musician, murder. Anyone could have sat in one of those seats. That's true. Or a falsely convicted murderer, Rex. Remember the story of uh, of the guy that used uh, footage from a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode, right? That was uh, that was taped at uh, Dodger Stadium, and they had a lot of B-roll and a person who was convicted of murder, I think convicted of murder, or at least charged with murder. His alibi was, hey, I was at Dodger Stadium. Prove it. No ticket stub, nothing. But they were taping an episode of Curb Enthusiasm that day, and they found his face from that B-roll footage. And then it went free. True story. I, th I think Netflix has a uh, has like a it's like a little like forty minute doc on it, where they interview the guy and Larry David and all that. There's Alvin Guzman, one thirty nine out of three ninety nine. Andrew with the Diamondbacks, and a Luke Waddell atomic autograph, forty seven out of one hundred. Jimmy and the Braves. A Luke and Baker. All America autograph. Now, I think he's a cardinal. Let's look it up. Got him. Yeah, he is a cardinal. What is what's he up to? I guess he started this season in Triple A to begin the 2022 season. All right. That's Andrew with the Redbirds. Although, I think they converted him to, uh, to a hitter. Yeah, they have him as a they have him as a pitcher here, but no, he's a first base prospect. T 
Tim still needs a Vin. <laughs> you don't deserve one if you don't know how to spell his name. And we got Uensky Noel. Cleveland, this is for you. That's Jordan Ashton and the Guardians with the spot that he won. We got Michael Triana, 140 out of 150. Blue Shimmer for Mark in Cincinnati. We're on to Cincinnati. We're on to Cincinnati. We got a Julio Rodriguez Bowman 3D Atomic Parallel to 150. That's nice. Mariners. Jeff with the M's. And we got Isaac Pacheco. 138 out of 499 for the Tigers, Evan. I want to say sometimes when you get one of those autos that there's a, you still get an extra auto? I thought I saw that last time, but maybe, maybe not this time. There's Reed Detmers. Throw no hitter last night against the Rays. There's Robbie Martin Jr., 109 out of 125. Aqua for the Rockies. Michael for the Rocks. And anyway, yeah, there it is. There's Wilman Candelario, 322 out of 499 refractor auto for the Royals. Corey with Kansas City. Got that team straight up on the board. So a nice little, nice little bonus auto there. And ladies and gentlemen, look at this. We made it to the final box. Thanks, everyone, for uh, making this happen. I appreciate it. All right. Good luck, everybody. Just a little bit. Last three autos coming up. Hopefully some nice low numbered parallels too would be awesome. Maybe a train whistle. Out of five and under. We haven't seen a super fractor yet.
There is a Ronnie Enriquez. That's a Texas Ranger going to Ricky and the Rangers. And we got a Malcolm Nunez refractor to the four ninety nine. We got uh, Eduberto Hernandez, 10 out of 99 green paper for the Rays. That will be for uh, Tim and the Rays. Yeah, that was that was a heck of a game, Tim. That Buck Celtics game. You're kind of hearing highlights in the background there. I mean, Celtics really should have had that, but that that just speaks to the quality of uh, of the Bucks. All right, we got Braylon. Mini A, 152 out of 250. That's when that's the name I'm going with. Uh, that goes to Mark and the Red Legs. Still need to see two more autos here. We got the first one over there. There's one. There's Brian Bello. That is going to go to Jonathan and the Boston Red Sox. Bowman first autograph. I like he. I like his his use of the canvas. Makes good use of the canvas there. There you go, number six Red Sox prospect. Looking for one more autograph. Are you next autograph? There is Andrew Benintendi, 44 out of 199. He's been hit the ball pretty well this season. That will be for Kansas City. That's going to go to Corey. All right, last little stack here in this break. Thanks, everybody, for making this happen. I appreciate it. There were a couple a couple hurdles that we had to jump over, but we did it. I appreciate everybody uh, chipping away at all of that. Some great teamwork. I appreciate it. Appreciate the teamwork. Appreciate all the work from everyone. And there it is, our final autograph. It's a Rosemar Quintana, 42 out of 150, blue chrome. Autograph for EA and the Nationals. Got you. Got at least one for you at the very end. One better than none. Thanks, everybody. Let's do a quick recap here. Actually, these three won't be on top. So let's go from the most recent box to the first box. So thanks, everyone, for getting in. I appreciate it. A lot of nice parallels here, a lot of nice players. And that, my friends, is that. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next baseball break. Bye-bye.